So section four, section four is just more fun because we're gonna learn more about prenatal development and we can learn more in detail. So the first step um, in prenatal development is zygote or let's say conception, which uh, means when a sperm and egg get together. It's gonna be any time uh, within, let's say two weeks um, and the whole shape of zygote is gonna be a mass cell of uh, a mass of cells, which can be in a shape of a hollow sphere. Uh, then we have embryo, which means uh, implantation uh, is complete and it can be any time after three weeks um, until eight weeks. Um, this is like more sense, like the most sensitive period um, for fetus because like uh, the baby is just uh, really at risk of teratogens. So if mom would have any sort of alcohol or um, be exposed to any sort of teratogens, the baby uh, would have a problem with like high probability, like 95% of the time, let's say, uh, the baby might have some sort of disabilities. Um, here you can see a picture of a baby beat fetal alcohol syndrome. You can see like um, lips, uh, eyes, and nose, it just, different and you can see even the shape um, from the moment that baby uh, would be born or even sometimes from uh, prenatal screening you can just understand that but like to be honest it's just so hard uh, for majority of women to just monitor if they are pregnant or not anytime before um, week uh, four because like they cannot understand that so they might consume alcohol um, so for women who, um, like got the decision and just trying to get pregnant, it is better, um, to not having any alcohol or, uh, not being exposed to any sort of teratogens. So here we can see, um, a good picture of cell divisions. Uh, like you can see here, cell mass uh, can differentiate uh, into uh, three different layers. First of all, we have endodermal, which means like uh, the cell going to develop uh, into internal organs and glands. Then we have ectodermal. Ecto means outside. So it means like developing into body parts uh, that may contact with outside world, like a skin, like ner nervous system. Then we have mesodermal, which meso means something in between. Um, so it's going to be developed into muscles, bone, sex organ, and heart. So I guess the name can speak. So hopefully you wouldn't have any problem understanding that. But like endo means like inside, ecto means outside, and meso is just something in between. Here you can see a better picture of how stem cell going to develop. Uh, you can have uh, more examples in the book, so check them out because they're definitely they're going to be quizzes, uh, question for quizzes, and also your exam based on that because like this is so important. Yeah. Next slide. Uh, by uh, by week three, we have electrical activity which can make heartbeats um, and. Um, part of the child. Um, cord and placenta are going to develop at this point as well. This is a typo. I will fix that. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Here you can see embryonic development. You can see any time starting from week three to week eight can be embryonic development. And it is very important because we have to be careful that the baby is not going to be exposed to any sort of teratogens because if they would be, they're definitely going to be a problem. There is a table about that. I will show you later, but just uh, keep that in mind. Week three to eight is just very important. So right after week eight, uh, we have fetus. So basically now we have a baby, like some someone inside that can actually move, that can give a signal that they are actually exist, uh, existing. 
And this is a good meme. It actually says that if the baby won't kick, everyone gets worried because like after week nine, the baby just have some sort of movement. So mom knows that there is a baby. So if the baby gets silent or just uh, not moving at all, mom gonna just panic. They feel like they're gonna be some problems. So yeah, this is the fetus part. Um, again, we have like further development in the structure um, that uh, have already been formed. Uh, basically, like we have heart, we have like some sort of muscle, but just they're going to develop more and more. Uh, we can see some increasement in size and weight. Uh, we can see some differentiation in sex organs, and we can see fetal activity like wiggling toes and kicking, which should be really fun. I wish I had you right in front of me. So some of you guys who already um, had a baby or um, like have a sibling who experienced that period could just share uh, your idea and experience. It could have been fun. But since I don't have you, let's get back to the topic. Um, so during the fetus life, like fetus time, 9 to 38 weeks, the baby has sensitivity to a stimulation from outside. For example, if they would hear any sort of crazy sound, the baby going to kick more. Or if mom would be under stress, the baby going to kick like crazy so they can understand everything. Uh, brain, uh, brain connection going to develop at this part, and that's why uh, different doctors are saying that mom should be totally relaxed and in a good condition because uh, it is totally relevant to relevant to baby's cognitive development. Um, also, baby at this point are going to be exposed to mother's uh, antibodies uh, to prevent any sort of uh, infection. How baby can be exposed uh, to antibodies? By umbilical cord because they're going to be a cord between baby and placenta and uh, they are kind of relevant, so that's the key. Age of viability, this is very important. We all know that uh, sometimes the baby gonna be preterm. Um, so when fetus, the only time that fetus can survive outside of the body can be any time after week 22 to 26. Like any time earlier, uh, it is kind of, uh, I wouldn't say impossible, but there's gonna be less chance for baby to survive. So age of viability means any time between uh, week 22 and 26, uh, which uh, fetus can survive outside of the womb. So here you can see some fancy pictures about baby's development, um, which is really fun. Uh, this is like the best position for the baby, like the head should be there so like they can just come out easier. Uh, here, like placenta that I was talking about, you can see a medical cord. You can you can see also amniotic fluid uh, that I told you about, which has baby cells, mom cells, um, and it can help us to just understand if the baby has um, any sort of disability or not. Uh, they're going to be definitely a question from this part as well. Um, so read that carefully, check the book chapter as well. So prenatal environmental influences, we already talked about this. Uh, we talked about stratagems. It can be any, um, anything outside that can harm baby physically, psychologically, and, uh, like in different ways. Uh, effects of, uh, stratagems depend on timing. First of all. Because, like, we talked about a critical period, like uh, week three to week uh, eight, which is so important, and mom shouldn't be exposed to any sort of stratagems. Uh, so, timing is just so important. It doesn't mean, like, for example, by week 25, uh, if we would have stratagems around, uh, baby would be fine. No, they're, again, there are going to be some damages here and there. But like that period is just so important. So timing matters. Um, another one can be genetics. Um, if there would be some sort of abnormalities in parents, like uh, dominant genes and recessive genes, um, stratagems from outside can just uh, simulate that, uh, that sort of uh, genetic uh, condition, right? 
So genetic is important as well. Um, another way can be any sort of high dosage, like the amount of teratogens that we are experiencing uh, can influence the baby a lot. For example, if uh, you would be exposed to a lot of alcohol, definitely baby would have more problem compared to just one shot or one sip. So it was a table that I was referring to, uh, like you can see here, okay, here is week one and week two. It says that there wouldn't be any sort of problem, like no susceptibility to teratogens. I will talk about this soon, but here it's just uh, showing you um, the chance of having a baby with, with like different abnormalities um, in different period and different week. So, my God. So highly sensitive period is just the purple one. You can see that starting from week three, everything gonna be really important. We can see even mental retardation here, uh, which is really bad. We can see any sort of teratogens can impact baby at some point. So we should avoid teratogens starting from week three. But here, for example, you can see that by week like 32 uh, to 38, there might not be that much a big deal. Um, if like, for example, mom would consume alcohol, again, we would have problem, but like, this is like the less sensitive period. So this period is very important, but like that part, anytime after week uh, 32, it's just less uh, sensitive, but it's still, Parents should just uh, follow all the rules. They should avoid any sort of damages to their baby. Back to this point, it says that there is no susceptible uh, and possibility for damages for children. That's wrong. The problem is if, for example, by week one or week two, when the, the lady is pregnant, the mom is pregnant, most of the time, first of all, they don't know if they are pregnant or not. So they are consuming alcohol. They would have like a lot of unhealthy diet or that kind of stuff. And they might have miscarriage. So basically they don't know because this is like week two. So they feel like this is this is their, their actual period. Uh, or they, they might understand this is a miscarriage, but since they don't know um, like if they are pregnant or not, uh, they cannot relate that bad habits, that teratogens to the miscarriage. Another point is there is no research, almost no research about women um, in that period who got pregnant and like follow the experimental situation. So this is a wrong claim about not being susceptible to any sort of teratogens. No, at any point of pregnancy, Women and even dad, like men, should avoid any sort of teratogens because it can directly impact health of the baby and they shouldn't risk anything. Be mindful of that. So here is the, uh, some, some ethical uh, problems. Uh, there are like five questions. It's just asking about you, for example, like different questions. Uh, which are so challenging, I want you to answer them by yourself and just actually think about them because they are so important. For example, just um, what is the parent's right to choose to treat or not to treat um, a Down syndrome children? For example, just imagine if you have a baby with like any sort of abnormalities or disorders, uh, should you do abortion or not? Because like basically you as a mom or a dad, you are attached to this fetus. You actually have some feeling for them. So should you actually have the baby or let's say, should you like kill them, right? It is really such a challenge. Another one is just emotional consequences of knowing that, for example, whether the doctor should inform parents that they're going to be a problem with the baby or not. Another way is about socioeconomic status, about like we all know that in like some uh, families with just uh, less fortunate families and low uh, socioeconomic status families, they don't have access to any sort of health care. So even if they would know about that kind of situation, how they can treat that 
and even if they would have the baby, how they can just provide uh, medicine for that or like um, other sort of help for the baby? Should uh, should governments and policymakers address that or there should be some other situation? So I would ask everyone to actually think about these ethical considerations because they are so important. And um, I will see you in the next section.